Hello. Welcome to our demo. It's 2020. And while we miss you, and we can't physically be there to let you hold, touch, and caress our fine, fine pottery, we hope that this will bring you some entertainment and some knowledge and understanding about the passion we have and the love we put into creating every wonderful and unique piece of art that we present. This demonstration is just one piece that we do, a mandala. Some of you might be familiar with what that is, and if you're not, well, I'm sure you'll recognize what we're going for. There's a lot of them out there. But each one is just as unique and beautiful as you are. Enjoy. you can see here so this piece has already been wheel thrown it's already been trimmed and after the piece is what we uh, call bone dry or it's greenware state it is just dried mud and we take these you know you just go to uh, HEB Walmart Sam's Club you can get these those green scrubby pads and we just take it and we gently clean off any of the throwing lines or little you know leftover clay bits from the trimming and smooth off the surface. Because we work with underglaze, um, spraying it with an airbrush, which we'll see here in just a short minute, um, the surface needs to be smooth. It's our canvas. So we use it to create these wonderful designs. And um, yeah, so we have an air hose, so I was blowing off some of that stuff. So this is our spray booth, <coughs> pardon me. And uh, we airbrush our underglazes. So this right here is Amico's uh, Amethyst uh, Velvet Underglaze. Uh, the next color is gonna be Turquoise, which is actually a house milled uh, mix. Um, and then we have uh, commercially made Chartreuse, which we tint with a little bit of dark green because we want it to be a little more limey. And then um, also a commercial underglaze, again, Amico um, Orange, um, bright orange and it's got it's mixed with a little bit of flame orange so it kind of dulls down that brightness but still gives it a really nice dominance on the piece. So there's a lot of wheels that we use to basically do the hard work for us. So here I've top centered the piece onto um, a little kick wheel that we have in the back. And I'm just using a number two pencil to let the wheel spin around. And I'm holding that pencil against my cheek for stability um, and letting the wheel create these perfect circles so I can lay out the grid. So what I'm doing right now is creating all of my guidelines for making the pot um, uh, design. So after you have the circles, I kind of eyeball the center. Uh, we have this like really bendy wire. Don't know what it's from. I'm sure it's an old recycled piece as many tools in our pottery studio are. Um, you don't have to buy expensive tools to get the right thing for the right job, honestly. Um, so anyway, and there's an old postcard. Uh, we line it up in the middle and it gives us that perfect 90 degree angle. Um, so now I've created, um, you know the circles and now we've created the lines so we've got it quadranted out into four quarters and I'm gonna break it down even further This is a little round dial that we have with all different types of cutout radio lines. And there's a little cut in the middle. So it's really cool because you can lay it and you line up that little cross in the middle of the circle. And then you line it up with the edges all around. Um, and it can tell me where I can divide it up. So I get even div uh, divisions and even little um, uh, pieces of the pie as it were. <laughs> um, and then we'll grab that uh, wiggly metal tool again and go ahead and use that to create those final lines. Um, and then once, once I do this, 
um, it'll come off the wheel and we will go over to coffee you guys sorry <laughs> I would go over and start working on the design now I did not have a um, a design already sketched out or anything I personally really enjoy the freedom of just pulling shapes and creating something kind of on a whim um, and uh, you'll see that here so so once we get to this point I've got all of my guidelines and I'm gonna put this on like a little lazy Susan and you can either use a towel or what I have is like a little piece of foam and that just protects the piece from any uh, scratches or like as I'm applying pressure to the piece for carving or design work it kind of gives it a little give so using those guidelines um, I'm gonna take um, my pencil which I didn't mention this earlier but it's important that your pencil isn't too sharp so you can see it's a regular number two pencil and the tips a bit dull um, so that's important because if the tip is too sharp it'll gouge into your underglaze um, which can you know leave marks so if you're not sure like say you change your mind later on um, you're, you're not going to want that gouged out of the surface because then you know you can't really fix it so these are some of the shapes that we use um, it's just um, art foam and we've just cut out some you know unique shapes some standard circles squares triangles um, you know anything like that and because it's art foam it's real flexible and it doesn't scratch the surface of the pot so it creates a really nice you know safe zone now if you don't have art foam you can use um, a paper so I don't recommend like something flimsy like computer paper but like we use old postcards and things like that it adds a nice structural stability so you don't have to worry about your shape warping as you're trying to trace it however you do need to be careful when putting it on the surface if you've already applied underglaze because just like the pencil it can scratch your underglaze um, and damage um, that work so because you got to remember we're working on greenware and underglaze is just sprayed on top so really the whole thing is just um you know just dry clay so there's not really a way to go back you could you know paint it a little bit but you're gonna see that mark because it's it's a different application than the airbrushing so here's we're just gonna go through a time lapse a little bit of me uh, playing out the design um, and I'm using again all those different shapes so I did not have a sketch in mind um, I really didn't you know doodle anything so a lot of what's cut out in this is me like putting random shapes on the form and then like sitting back and looking at it and going yeah I like that or oh no like that, that's cool let's keep doing that um, I've been doing these long enough that I don't really have a lot of those like I already kind of in my mind have an idea of what I want um, because I've seen enough mandalas I do look at a lot of pictures of them I have you know a Pinterest board um, and we have uh, several books uh, in our studio that are really good reference books I cannot stress enough if you don't have art books even if you're not looking you know to find techniques and stuff just get some picture books they're amazing for inspiration um, and sometimes you know we honestly one of my favorite ones is a book full of crop circles um, and it's just pictures of crop circles over the years and it is the coolest thing to look at uh, for inspiration on mandalas or just any sort of you know funky you know kind of generic design but then you can spice it up with whatever you want so once you get that design out um, what's really cool is taking this part so the detail brush is my favorite uh, I have it set to a pretty thin nozzle point and what's in there is just black velvet underglaze from Amico and uh, there are two different ways that we'll do our stencil design uh, for highlighting those shapes um, so as you can see there's a lot of lines and that number two pencil by the way will burn out in the firing it doesn't come through after it's been bisque it burns completely out um, so which is really neat so none of those little marking lines are going to be visible uh, in the finished product so anyway um, I am going to show you here so what I'm doing is laying down again those foamy um, circles that I used actually one of them earlier uh, in that time lapse as my uh, demonstration piece um, so I'm weighing it down with some random nuts and bolts nothing too big nothing too heavy but it's gonna hold it down while I airbrush that surface um, and we're going to take that airbrush here and just gently go around the edges um, and this will highlight um, the piece and I'm going to be actually spraying kind of directly so you've got the back and the um, 
the stencil itself, I'm actually spraying right where that edge is. So I get an overlap of both. So the line isn't too thick and um, it creates a really nice faded edge. Um, so we're gonna get a sharp edge on this one. So a little time lapse there, a little bit of, 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 a, of a rotation on that. So I've got this kind of quadranted out now and uh, the detail brushing is going along. So one of the other ways, which is my personal favorite, is just freehanding it. Um, and again, a lot of practice. Um, if you want to try this, it's a lot of fun. Just don't get too mad at yourself. You're probably gonna be a little shaky at first. Um, and you kind of have to move fast when you do this because um, you can get a little puddling very easily. So I'm just kind of freehanding the form and going um, at it just to get those shapes on that one. And I'll do that a few times on here, but you can see the wonderful difference between using um, the stencil base um, to kind of cover up part of that spray and then not using it to get that free handed real feathered spray and that's going to give us a really cool uh, contrasting effect on the final piece and varying that up on your surface if you decide you want to try this yourself it can really be a lot of fun and you can do the whole thing one way or the whole thing the other way um, with or without those uh, stencil guides it's up to you, but I personally have really started enjoying uh, mixing the two. I think it adds a really nice uh, rhythm and variation to the design elements later on. So, ooh, my favorite part. So personally in my own art, I love carving my surfaces. So I have a carving tool and then you always want like a soft brush. Um, so when you're carving into already dry clay, so the greenware, um, it's really good to have a nice tool, either a, a really good pointy tool. We use these ball uh, ended tools. Um, you can get them online or from any ceramic supply store, or um, you can actually go to like, uh, like Sally Hansen or like into the section of like nail polish stuff and it's actually really cheap to get them um, as like a little um, uh, they're tools used for like doing polka dots on your fingernails I don't do my nails so <laughs> I don't use it for that but it makes really good tool for this so um, what I'm doing now is just you know kind of going through and since my clay is unfired our clay body is actually white so I'm creating another line inside or on the edge of those detailed lines um, so that way they can uh, pop out and be a little more predominant on the surface and those lines of course are going to fire white um, so as after you get all of that carved out whatever designs you want you don't have to follow every line um, you dust it off off. So these are our under glazes in little squeezy bottles. And so we get them online. Uh, you can also get them at Hobby Lobby. They're a little different there. Um, but they have these wonderful little metal tips and they're good for linking lots of dots. Um, and they're also really good um, for making lines and stripes. So we do these little, you know, drips and draws with them. So that's how we do a lot of our dotting and striping. Uh, so anyway, so uh, I'm going to go through here. And this is again another time lapse um, a piece like this has thousands and thousands of dots um, and this is probably the longest um, uh, one that it takes when we do these larger pieces it takes a long time because you got to go through um, and it this part uh, took me two days again working in between other projects um, to finish off this part so the, my favorite part is adding designs within the design um, so here you can see that I'm kind of following some of those earlier sketches and I'm pulling out another design within it so it's not just me following the lines of the things that I've uh, either used uh, the detail brush to outline or taken that uh, carving tool and carved out a white outline from I'm actually going in and um, adding an additional um, kind of dimension to it and it really uh, adds this wonderful back and forth and depth to your piece if you're going to go this kind of route um, again just like with creating the design uh, the only thing I really plan out is what colors on the background so of course the background on this is purple in the middle to turquoise to chartreuse to bright orange at the edge um, so that's the only thing I'm really taking into consideration as I'm putting down my dots and stripes um, because I don't want to put turquoise on top of turquoise because it's probably going to fade out but I might put turquoise right up against the edge of the other turquoise because then it'll create this really cool like fade so it, it adds this element to it that's just really um, again deep and wonderfully just 
oh, I, I love colors. Uh, and like I said, you know, this is this is so much fun. Uh, if you've never worked with underglazes before, there's uh, wonderful underglazes. We use pretty much almost exclusively Amico velvet underglazes. Um, and uh, occasionally, you know, we'll pop in there with a, with a Mako underglaze. Um, but uh, we also make our own uh, glazes in-house. After uh, all the dogging and striping is done, we do a bit of uh, black on the edge to finish off the piece and do that on the uh, back side as well. Um, so all of our pieces of course have our RA Pottery stamp um, for our shop here. And then all of us uh, who work on specialty pieces, um, we also sign our work. So if you see one that says KD, that's uh, my initials. Um, so uh, of course this piece is signed and dated because we can't forget, oh, wonderful 2020. Um, but yeah, so uh, this piece is going to go into the bisque as we speak right now. It's still in production. Um, so it'll go for two firings, uh, first for bisque, second for glaze. Um, and uh, when it's all done, we are going to have it up on the website for Texas Clay Festival. So if you want to see this work uh, finished, be sure to pop over to our website and check that out. Also, don't forget to peruse all the artists and videos available on Texas Clay Fest's website. Um, the show might not be in person this year, but Oh, they've done such an amazing job. Uh, we're super excited um, to have this show online this year and available to everyone. Um, again, want to thank you guys for uh, watching this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about our work. And um, hopefully, you know, you uh, come by and check out the finished product on our website. Um, all right, guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so very, very much for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, while we can't be there in person, this is just a wonderful way of us connecting with you during this time. And we want to thank you so very much uh, for all your support. Um, and from the very bottom of our hearts, uh, we love you and we appreciate all that you do for us as artists. So, you know, you might not be able to get out there and, uh, you know, get uh, in all sorts of trouble in person, but the internet is a world of its own so thank you for coming to our little corner of it today and joining me for a little bit of insight into creating uh, some ceramic art um, thank you again so very much we hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day rest of the weekend hopefully a rest of the year and we look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person again sometime soon um, so again Thank you. Love y'all. We'll see you next time.